everyone so it's been a while I promised myself i would make more videos unfortunately that didn't happen but you know it's a new year new me better scheduling fingers crossed so we're going to continue on from the solded white paper which is essentially our reddit uh, decentralized app tutorial and we're going to break this down into four chunks uh, four parts and the first part will be about how we will implement threads so it's been a while if you've forgotten everything check out the white paper video that i made previously otherwise let's get started so in this video we're going to talk about how to create a reddit feed and how do we create threads so here's an example of a feed here we go to our favorite subreddit like wall street bets uh, we have a list of threads which you can see over here and inside of thread itself we have content so in this video we're going to talk about the requirements and the pdas that are going to be involved to make this application moving on i created a new playlist to keep track of our reddit DAP tutorial so a quick background reminder again of everything you need to know about salon development to create a DAP. first we need to understand the concept of accounts and accounts essentially are how we store data on a smart contract to keep any state information specifically it's stored all on the solana blockchain and a account is normally owned by a public private key pair uh, the account is associated with your public key and you own it because you have the private key uh, an example you see up here is the thread account uh, this is what we're going to store uh, don't worry we'll talk about this later and another concept you need to understand is what a pda is a PDA is a program derived address. Uh, specifically, they're addresses that are used to create accounts that's owned by your program. Specifically, there's no private key involved. It's just, it's just a public address. So some of the use cases for it is um, the first one is being it's a intermediate third party account used in transactions. Kind of if you think of this as a uh, if you're buying real estate, you need to have a third party escrow, and that's what a PDA can be used for. Another example of a use case, which is what we're going to be using for this whole entire tutorial, is it's kind of like a hash map for those familiar to quickly find accounts in a smart contract. And we're going to look at an example later. So PDAs are generated from a seed. The seed here in this example, in this video, is we have three things. We have a string, uh, the string thread vote. We have the key of the authority so maybe my public key and we have a thread id which is the id of the thread that we're creating and you so you combine these three together and you get a address so if you use the same three values you always generate the same address which is very important later to retrieve data and gives us this hash map property that i referred to earlier so if you want to learn more about pdas i made some videos a while back so check out my um playlist for all of that information but now that we have a quick refresher let's actually get to the meat of this video so what are the requirements that we have for creating a feed the only real requirement here is we want to create a generic feed for all threads we're not going to worry about subreddits we're not going to worry about any user specific thread or comments you know how you might be able to look up a user on reddit and see all of their posts and comments that they've made we're not gonna worry about this for this tutorial at least and we're not going to worry about how we rank the threads. We're not going to create any algorithms to factor that in. The only one thing we care about is uh, the time that the post was made. And so that's our feed. So let's talk about our threads. So we're going to make a super simple thread. We only have two things. We have a title for the thread and we have the text or the content. We're not going to do anything else. No images, no videos, no links, nothing. Just a title and text. So how we're going to approach this is we're going to have a list of options that we're going to explore. So option one, we're going to create a solution that's just a thread for the feed. Option two, we're going to see if we can create a solution for threading for the users, like user specific threads, how to search for that. And option three, we're going to see how we can design uh, accounts to support a solution for both. So option one, designing threads for feeds. Okay, so exploring option number one. How do we create uh, threads for a feed? So here is, I promise you, a solution that does not work. And a naive idea you might have is, okay, so we have a thread account, that's a PDA, and the seed value is two things. We have a string constant, because it's always good to have a constant, so you can pair it with something else. And then you have a random ID, which is associated with the thread. 
And so if I say, you know, 1005, it would be my ID for a thread that I make. Whenever I look up that ID, I'll find my account. And the content of the thread itself is the title and oh, content, which are both strings. So this doesn't work. And the reason why it doesn't work is because we need to generate all the threads for a feed in our example. And we can always look at other solutions to figure out to actually map the ID. But just relying on Solana as a backend, we don't have a way to get the list of IDs. A solution to get around this, for example, is that we have our own database on the backend, and that database would actually keep track of all the IDs. But uh, for you know, just for example, we won't do that. We're just going to see if we can rely on Solana itself as a backend. So how do we actually get this to work? Well, let's try this again. So first, we have an account called a um, feed account. The seed value is just the string feed because we only want one instance of it. And inside of it, here's a strategy I've seen for it. You just have a count that we call a thread count. And actually what thread count is, it's an ID. So back to a thread account that we created, similar thing that we see in the previous uh, slide, we have the C value for thread account is a the string thread and the thread count and the content's the same. And so how it works is the inside the feed, we have a count value and that count value is associated with what the thread account is. And so this works because now whenever we want to generate a list of threads for our feed, we would get the PDA of our feed account, which is simple because we know the C values feed. So that's easy to look up. And then we just want to get the latest, you know, let's say 20 latest threads. So we can just see what our thread count is. You know, for example, whenever we make a thread, we'll just increment this. So thread count will be you know, 100. And so if we want to generate the last 20 accounts, we just look up thread count 100, 99, 98, 97, and so on and so forth. And so that's how we would generate a list of threads for a feed. And moving on, what we talked about doesn't help us generate a list of threads for the users. So how might we accomplish something like this? So here, here's a architecture that might work. So we have a user account. You notice that we don't have a seed. And the reason for that is because this user account is not a PDA. It's actually associated with your public private key. And inside the user account, we have a thread count, similar strategy to what we saw before. Um, except the important part is this thread count is actually associated with just your user. So uh, we have the thread account again, and this has the same data as before we've seen. And everything is exactly the same as before. If we want to generate the last 20 threads that a user has made, then we just do the same thing before. We look up the thread count of the specific user. And then once we have that information, we just look up their uh, you know, last 20 value uh, descending from their count value. And then we'll find all the threads that's associated with that specific user. It's good for user lookup, but it's bad for a feed because we don't have a way of knowing what the order is. So how can we get a solution for that works for both a home and a user feed? So let's take a look. Uh, the quick TLDR is we kind of just combine them together. So let's look at the user scenario. We'll, we'll do the same thing as we did earlier. We have a user account. We'll have something, we have a new account called the user thread account. And the seed value for it is it's the, we have a constant string called feed thread. We have a user ID that's the pub key of the user. And then finally, we have the thread count, which is the same uh, count value that we store on the user account. And for the content, we, it's, we just associate it with a thread ID. And as you can guess, we can find the user thread account by looking up the specific user's user ID, which we know because we are querying that specific user. And then we just give it a valid number. And so once we have that information, uh, we can find our, our thread account. This thread account is the thing that has the actual information. And so the big difference that we made here is that instead of using the counter that we've been using before as the C value for our thread account, we now actually associate it with a specific ID that we can save everywhere and use. And so the only big difference here is that we created this abstraction um, called a user thread account, which bridges the user with the thread account. And why do we do that? And the reason for that, as you see, is so that we can reference it in other means. For example, let's say we want to get a list of threads for our feed. And we've seen this before, we had a feed account. And what we can do with this is we create this new feed thread account. 
and it has a seed value you know, user thread and it has a thread count which is associated with the feed and the content is once again the thread id which is in this instance a random id that's associated with the specific thread we're looking up and just like before if we want to find a specific feed thread account we just look up a specific thread count and then we'll find the feed thread account with the thread id and then with the thread id we can look up the metadata for our thread account geez i wonder if i broke a record for how many times i said thread in a minute anyways in conclusion this can be a solution that serves both of our uh, cases that we talked about where we can uh, both create a list of threads that's associated with a specific user and how we can populate a feed with all the latest threads but so in conclusion to solve our original problem we're going to choose solution number one and the reason for that primary is because it just meets our feed requirement we don't care anything about uh, generating a list of threads for a specific user another advantage is that it's simple to do all right so hopefully that makes sense to everyone if if not please leave a comment and i'll try my best to explain so what's next well in the next set of videos which i will start recording now so, so don't worry we will not fall behind this time it's too early in the new years to lose my resolution so what's coming up next well part two we're going to talk about upvoting threads Part three, we're going to talk about how we can comment or reply on specific uh, threads and to other comments. And then finally, part four, we're going to talk about how we can upvote the comments and replies that are made inside a thread. So with that, I hopefully you enjoyed this short video, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.